Okay, so question 15. And we're looking at the static equilibrium problem. And we're looking at the yeah, canonical problem of a sign attached to a wall by a bolt and a string. Uh, Total at the left end of the sign is held in place by a bolt, at the right end is held by a rope, 20 degrees here to the horizontal. And the sign is uniform, as many since it's uniform in mass, um, 3.2 meters long. That's where the weight force here is acting right at the center, 1.6 and 1.6. And it has a mass of 16 kgs. What is the magnitude of the force F exerted by the bolt? So I'll solve this problem using both torque and um, Newton's second law. So or basically Newton's second law in both terms stating that we know for if it's in static equilibrium, we know the net torque is zero, and then we'll also know that the net force is zero. So uh, we can solve for the magnitude of the tension force, which would would have some sort of similarities to the bolt force, given that their x components have to be the same. So I'll start sort of this problem from a uh, torque analysis first. So I'll just uh, maybe do it draw a simpler model of the um, sign. Just going to use a small um, rod. And then what we do we have is a, we have a weight force here acting into the middle. And then we have a tension force here at 20 degrees to the horizontal and then this is the bolt here so there is a force of the bolt of course um, but uh, any torque exerted by that force is zero about this pivot point so if I make this the pivot I'm only going to worry about these two forces again repeating that there is no torque by the pivot force or by the bolt force or pivot force if we place a pivot here. So in this example then the weight uh, about the about this pivot point the weight would tend to rotate the sign in a clockwise fashion and the tension would tend to rotate in a counterclockwise fashion. So since the net torque is zero, the torque due to the weight force um, should be equal in magnitude to the torque due to the tension force. So I'll just set their set their magnitudes equal to each other. So torque to the weight is equal to the magnitude of the torque due to the tension. And the torque due to the weight force is just it's the size of its force times the this uh, perimeter distance here, and which is just half the length of the sine. So this is just going to be mg times 1.6 meters. And then the tension force, okay, what you can see here is that its position vector would be the entire length of the sine and then I would sort of consider this component here as t perpendicular which would be t times the sine of uh, times the sine, t times the sine of 20 so I'd write this in as um, t perp times 3.2 meters which is equivalent to t times the sine of 20 degrees times 3.2 meters. So if I'm trying to solve for T, in this case, the tension, it would be mg 1.6 divided by sine 20 times 3.2, so add in here 16 kgs, 9.8 meters per second squared, is 1.6 meters, divide all of that by sine 20 degrees, times 3.2 meters and that leads to a, a force of 230 newtons yeah. and if we want to now consider um, what's going on at the bolt and uh, we'll consider some uh, force analysis so I'll draw this uh, I'll draw a free by diagram for the for the rod um, and think about the forces that are exerted on the on the rod slash sign. So now again there's this weight force and we know 
if this is going to be 16 times the 9.8. So it's 157 newtons. And this is tension force, which we now know to be uh, 230 newtons. And we can decompose that into the X and Y components. And typically, what we draw uh, components on a free wire diagram is just more to solve the problem. So if you do 30 times this cosine of uh, 20, you end up at 215 newtons. If you do 230 times the sine of 20, you get uh, 78.4 newtons. So if we look at then the bowl to bolt hat, the bolt force has to balance some of these two. So since the weight has no x component, the size of the X component of the bolt force has to be exactly equal to the X component of the um, uh, tension. So let's draw this somewhat accurately. So this is the side, this is basically um, the bolt force X, and it has to be also 215 newtons to balance out the X component of the tension force. And then the Y component here, so the 78.4 upward is not balancing the 157, so the bolt Y will be at 157 minus the 78.4, and, and you end up uh, working this out to a little uh, more accurately. We end up with the same Y component. And this is uh, sort of down to the symmetry of this problem. This is the bolt force in the y direction, and this is also 78.4. So this is, I'm just going to use capital B for bolt force, or FB, whatever we want to use it for. So then, if we were to, since these components are identical to here, you could, just to sort of, in case there's a problem where uh, there's not this type of symmetry, uh, technically, the correct way to find the, the magnitude of the bolt force is to do the Pythagorean sum of these two components, and so I'll do that. But we, from from this diagram, we can see that it must be also 230. But just for um, for clarity and how you should uh, do these problems, so the magnitude of this is going to be the magnitude of the bolt force x squared plus the bolt force y component uh, to be squared. I think this is the square root of and 215 newtons all to squared for 78.4 newtons all to be squared and this does work out to be oops sorry works out to be 213 newtons also and again this is down to the symmetry in the problem and this is not always uh, the case and so but this is sort of the strategy for a general torque problem you're sort of co combining uh, some torque analysis here to figure out the size of one of the forces, and then you're, you're using uh, Newton's second law, and you know, that force is zero, and looking at the balancing of components um, to, lead you, to lead you what, what is uh, happening at the bolt uh, in this case. So, choice D is correct.